Sometimes it might feel like you're the only person in the world making your art and that it's a lonely, creative journey to understanding yourself and what you want to make. My art, my story, my work, my plant. This plant looks like it's all on its own in a jar of water, trying to grow its roots out a little bit. You wouldn't even know that it's a clipping from a much larger plant that belongs to my grandma who gave another one to my dad, and that this is the third generation of this specific plant. The grandma plant, if you will, was from a greenhouse that she worked in in 1956. This one's going in a pot once the roots are long enough, but most of nature isn't in a pot. It's out here. They're embedded in deep mutual interactions with all of the flora and fauna in the ecosystem. Plants, bacteria, bugs, animals, sunlight, rain, all deeply connected and interacting and dependent on each other. But you? Nope. You are an exception. Oh. You are all alone oh. publishing your work to the rest of the world. Okay. Which is somehow separate from you. It's a lonely story that we tell ourselves and it's like not even entirely accurate. You are in the center of a web of connected people. This is like your dad, this is your grandma, this is your coworker, this is that acquaintance from middle school that you never really talked to. And you being in the center of this, even that is an optical illusion because the truth is there is no center. There's just people and places and time. A creek doesn't have a center. It only has a direction forward. In art and in artistic communities, I feel like it's so important to find that movement, find what people want to do. This is a perfect example. I guess I'm a YouTuber now, so I need green things on my desk to look more uh, productive and hip. This is just a fake one that I got from Target. I wanted the idea of plants without actually wanting to put in the work for plants. The shallow interaction on social media and specific platforms give us just enough community feeling to like scratch the itch and to avoid the actual interaction of people that you see every day but just don't talk to. This is just true to life, but if we think about art and artists and creativity like an ecosystem where we're all organisms feeding off of each other and mutually benefiting from each other, then suddenly a lot of weight is lifted off of our shoulders because the artistic process doesn't have to be this lonely, serious thing. Get over here. What if I told you that art is a language and language is built for communication? Yeah, we're going outside. This is easier said than done. What I'm about to talk about will probably sound something like, hey, uh, just get out there and talk to people. Get out of your room. Being social and connecting with people and networking, it's, it's hard and it's a skill that develops over time. I'm an introvert. I recharge when I'm by myself. I get it. And without all my friends that I can socialize with and feel myself around, I doubt I'd have half the confidence to be social and put myself out there. It's, it's hard, but it does get easier over time especially when you get older. You just like, <laughs> you just stop caring. Also, like, you can make art by yourself. You're supposed to make art by yourself. It could just be a hobby you want to do by yourself to recharge. If you want to master it, most of those 10,000 hours you spend are alone. Art is a deeply personal experience between you and the craft. All I want to do is just break down the myth of the lonely creative and just assure you that you don't have to do it alone. You coming? No, no, I'm good. Oh, come on. It's a nice day outside. We're going to be out in the sun talking about ecosystem no, stuff. No, with no, I, and... I don't want to do any of that today. I just want to stay inside. Oh, come on, Ted. You got to go outside eventually. It's good for you. No, I, I understand that. I'm doing stuff tomorrow. Just being inside is an important part of how I recharge. And a oh. lot of people yeah. uh, feel the same way. Isn't it like healthier to recharge outside in the sun with people? Yeah, I, I know that. I got stuff planned tomorrow. I just would like to recharge inside. There's nothing wrong with that. But you don't have like a moral obligation to go outside on a nice day off if we're not feeling like it. Yeah, I guess that would be you know, weird. I can do the inside parts of the video. Oh, that makes sense. And I'll go outside and do the outside stuff because I feel like going outside. Good plan. Is this weird? It's a little weird. Especially in a video about talking to other people. Yeah, I don't know. Let's move on. Okay, we're going outside. 
We'll do some info and then we're gonna go to my favorite spot in the whole wide world. Bye. Have fun <laughs> in the sun. <laughs> oh. So ideas are also in an ecosystem. This one didn't entirely come from me. It was heavily inspired by Austin Kleon's Show Your Work. If you look back closely at history, many of the people who we think of as lone geniuses were actually part of a whole scene of people who were supporting each other, looking at each other's work, copying from each other, stealing ideas, and contributing ideas. The genius doesn't take away from the achievements of those great individuals, it just acknowledges that good work isn't created in a vacuum and that creativity is always, in some sense, a collaboration. One single artist did not create the Impressionist movement or the Renaissance or the French New Wave. Van Gogh, Monet, Manet, Moiseau, none of them were artistic prodigies on their own as much as a connection in the web of the Impressionist movement. Sure, Mozart is talented, as talented as a silver spoon child is when their talent is fostered early on by the wealthy. But isn't there a whole movie based on the events that he had contemporaries like Antonio Soleri and Joseph Haid? Picasso invented cubism with George Brock. He hung out with Gertrude Stein and Ernest Hemingway. Einstein is almost famous for standing alone on the genius pedestal, but he was close friends and colleagues with Mary Curie. He debated with Neil Bohr. A lot of his math was helped by Hermann Minkowski and Marcel Grossman. If there wasn't an entire academia of mathematicians and physicists interacting, peer-reviewing, critiquing his work, his proofs might as well just be very sophisticated diary entries. And my favorite example, the group theory of William Shakespeare. Delia Bacon proposed that a bunch of playwrights and creative people were operating under the pseudonym of William Shakespeare. Can you imagine being in the William Shakespeare Club? Do you see the pattern here? There's this image that society grasps onto of this solitary, antisocial, but gifted, big IQ, dare I say, predominantly male and white, that's alone in a dark room, surrounded by papers and books and coffee, where no one understands their prodigal genius. Oh, I'm so smart. Why doesn't anyone understand me? Blah, 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 blah. Mother says I can be off-putting sometimes. Oh, on account of being one of the best mathematicians in the world. In the world. Oh, yes. It's a myth. We're told that geniuses are different from other people. The collective interactions of community is so much stronger and wholesome and longer lasting than one single thinker in a room alone. You spin me round, baby, baby, round, round, we go round, we go round, round, you spin me round, baby. Me and most of my friend group is in the world of short filmmaking, where collaboration isn't just this nifty part of the process, it's like essential. Film is a process of rubber hitting the road, where you have this little tree sapling of a good idea, and then you actually try to make it in reality hits. It is feeling the elements, the rain, the wind, and it is digging its roots into reality. And you have to adapt. Most of short filmmaking is problem solving. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> but when you make it with other people and when you collaborate, an amazing thing happens. You have to explain your idea. Just by getting it out of your head and putting it into words, you get a clearer idea of what you're trying to say. And you get to watch their eyes light up or they're just like looking at you like blank, like what? <laughs> and then you have to find better words to explain it. And the best part is it doesn't have to be one film. Suppose you guys have so much fun that you wanna make another one. Someone on the crew wants to do their idea. One person can direct one of the films that everybody does and then the next person can make theirs and the next person can make theirs. That's how reciprocity grows between creatives. People will want to help you because you help them on their projects. That is the creative ecosystem. I love coming down here. This is a creek between properties. It's my favorite place in the whole wide world. It's so untouched. There's no trails, not even a name for it. It's just creek. But no one would say life isn't happening down here. If I had like a month of free time, I would just take a journal and try to take field notes of every single thing down here of like bugs, bees, ferns, grass, moss. But I don't have that kind of time. I gotta make these silly little videos. What were we talking about? Ecosystem. Okay, we're in a creative ecosystem. Ted, how 
do I tap into this creative ecosystem? How do I get the most out of it? How do I use it to my advantage? Those are the wrong questions. The real question is, why do you wanna do that? What is your reasons for interacting with everyone? Do you want people to help you? Or do you want to help other people? Do you want to learn from people? Do you want to collaborate with people? Because the why is really, really important. There are people that we know that use people and they're not fun to be around. People don't like being sold to, people don't like being pitched to, but they love being listened to. If someone realizes that you're listening to them, they'll tell you all sorts of shit. They'll be your best friend. Being interested in them in the sense that like, you want to know what they're about and what kind of art they like to do. Learning about them, that's so important and it's so much better than seeing them as a resource that you leverage with other things. There's a few things that I've learned that kind of help. Let me know if they help you also. The first thing I figured out is just in general, go first. Most people aren't mean, they just don't care. They just have their own lives. They just don't give a shit about you. <laughs> Going first is scary. Rejection is scary. People not wanting your time is scary. Will they say no? Maybe, possibly, but chances are they want the same thing. They want cool projects, they wanna work with people, and they want to help people because you are going to help them. Second one, hopefully this doesn't come as a surprise. You gotta be nice, you gotta be kind. A lot of people think that being kind is just like being respectful to people and saying please and thank you, saying hello. Uh, no, that's, the bare minimum. <laughs> That's being polite. Kindness is this active thing that takes work. You have to be willing to do small things for people and not expect anything in return, which is hard, especially we're artists. Art is this weird in-between thing between actual really hard work and somebody's hobby. A lot of people expect free things, but small things at first, it has this amazing transformative effect where they want to do something nice for you. They want to reciprocate. It's a whole wonderful exponential effect. There's a quote that I love a lot by um, Jacob Collier, that musician guy. Don't try to be cool, be warm. That's cool. <laughs> like because that, yeah. the world's full of people trying to be cool, but yeah. the world needs warm people. Yeah. And the world needs you, like you, the you that you are. Don't try to impress people. If you spend all your time trying to impress people, there will always be someone more impressive. You will always be outshined by some person who's either working harder or has better luck. But kind people, absolute opposite. If there's more of it in one person, it just lifts everybody up. If people don't like that you are being kinder than them, good, you don't need them. The right people will appreciate kindness and vulnerability and empathy. You know who's cool? Lizards, cold-blooded. The last one is a bit tricky and it's the starting point. It's find a community in the art form that you have. Most art has a plural. Painting has murals. Writers have writers workshops and writers events. National Novel Writing Month is a lot of fun. Game jams, community theater, all that stuff. If you are interested in something, chances are there are other people who are also interested in it. This is especially true now with the internet is a great way to start the connections. Uh, between people and creating stuff. Ideally, in person can be a lot stronger. See real things, real interactions with people are very important. So that's what I've found out. Have the courage to reach out to people, show kindness, find the community and everything. Oh, another one. There's one more spot I wanna show you. There is a remarkably rare phenomenon in nature where there is true eternal fire little pockets of fire that will never run out of fuel for millennia. One such flame is in Iraq, another's in Turkey, Wigan, Australia, Ethiopia, Turkmenistan, and the most famous one is under a waterfall five minutes away from where I live in Western New York. Yeah, it's pretty cool. The problem is it is the most famous one. Believe it or not, I tried to film this video four years ago, but the crowds were insane and I just, I gave up. The secret has escaped our little woods. So the only way to film this thing properly is uh, just, just, just going super fucking early. Hi, so my name, oh my God. What is the exact time? It's 5.06 in the morning. I'm a little sleep deprived. Uh, this is the only way we can get eternal flame shots uh, 
in solitude and hopefully it would be nice and beautiful with the golden hour and all that you know maybe we'll just maybe we'll, maybe after today we'll be a morning person <laughs> The flame is not lit. I'll never lie to you again, I'm so sorry. I didn't bring a lighter. That's the whole thing. You're supposed to bring a lighter to the Chestnut Ridge in case it's not lit, because the whole point is there's methane gas here. There's like deposits, you know, there's like organic deposits. It's a bunch of nerd shit. Rhine Street Shale, I think is what it's called. And shale is organic material. It's clay and dirt compressed into sheets. Over time, it breaks down turns into natural gas and it creates methane pockets. All you gotta do is just take a lighter and it'll light back up again. That was footage from like three years ago. I was trying to make a point here. There was like a metaphor that like the fuel is always there. It's always in the atmosphere. The fire is not dead. It's just dormant. It's just extinguished. And with the right tools, when you're starting out a new thing, when you just started drawing, just started playing piano, the fire, the creative fire, the passion, tiny little kindling, you're just starting to ignite it. What it needs is it needs encouragement from parents, from mentors, from school. It needs people to notice your improvements and pay attention and go like, that's really cool, especially for young people. And then later you have the constructive criticism. Logs are like critique and like constructive critique, like real biting critique that you know you need. On a big, roaring, mature fire, uh, they take a lot of energy to get through, but it's invaluable fuel for the fire and it'll make it even larger. For a tiny little thing when you're just starting out, it just squashes it. Nowadays, I've learned to only give critique when it's asked for, unless they want that, unless it's warranted. Because I don't know what level somebody's at. Are they kindling or are they roaring mature fire? But in this case, it's none. There is no flame and I don't have a lighter. But hey, look at this. I'm a decent editor. I'm a roaring mature fire of an editor. I could have uh, pretended that the fire was a light and then just filmed this over there where you can't see the empty uh, hole where the fire should be. But hey, I'm honest with you, and I think you should appreciate that. It rained yesterday. That'll do it. That'll do it. Fire's lit. As soon as I stopped recording, someone showed up, and they happened to have a lighter. Woo! Thank you! fires out <gasps> it's out oh no <laughs> I was about to say uh, how beautiful of a moment that was someone just showed up and lit the fire because sometimes you need someone just to blow on it a little bit just to light it up and now the fires out this is awkward but hey someone else will come along with a lighter Thank God for smokers. That's the moral of this story. The same exact interaction has probably happened hundreds, if not thousands of times. People show up, they're disappointed. Someone comes with a lighter, everyone's happy. It gets extinguished again. I think a big important thing about this whole thing is it's not a big deal. If you have a thing you have to go to and you're really stressed and you're really nervous about it and you're like, oh God, like I don't know anybody there. Like no one's like me. Maybe I should just not go. And then you don't go. You just stay at home and you just have this f***ing gnawing feeling that's like, why didn't I go? Why can't I just like muster up the courage to like talk to people? It's not a big deal. There will always be another thing. People love to uh, congregate. Every single meeting, every single event, every single like community thing, every single hangout, there will always be somebody with a lighter. The flame will always be lit again. And 
we'll carry on. We'll go to the next thing. If it doesn't work the first time, if there's a bad apple that spoils the bunch, spoils the community, spoils your passion for things, there's a lot of people. There are awful people that we'll never meet, and there are amazing people that we'll never meet. But you'll never know if you don't go out and talk to them and put yourself out there and hold your feet to the fire. That's out currently. So everything's fine. This is it. You're here. So enjoy. Bye. (laughs) Bye.